Hello friends, welcome back to CCSP Certified Channel. My name is Ra and I have 14 years of industry experience. I have recently cleared CCSP exam and decided to create this video series on important topics because soundness of concepts is very important to clear the CCSP exam. And these uh, concepts are not only required for CCSP but is helpful for any other IC square exam or even if you are in private job or government jobs it is good it requires to your day to day job also to clear some of your interviews also so uh, in in the previous lectures i have discussed cryptography in details we have seen the transport layer security also in this lecture we will discuss the handshake protocol and as i have mentioned in the last lecture that uh, this might not be very important for CCSP because CCSP might not ask this in, in as detail as I will explain now. But it's very important for the uh, for the job interviews or other exams. So it's good to understand how the handshake happens in TLS. So just we do a quick recap then we'll go to the topic of the day. And uh, uh, as I mentioned in my video previous videos also, if you want to enroll for dedicated CCSP batch please write me as CCSP certified at the gmail.com I am starting my batch soon and you can get a more info about the new batches and as uh, uh, if you are new my suggestion is to have a look at the previous three videos four videos I have prepared on the basic cryptography and advanced cryptography and uh, there will be around 10 questions from the cryptography itself in the CCSP exam and other ISC score exams also so the confidentiality integrity non-repetition is discussed in detail and uh, there are mechanisms to achieve those encryption hashing and digital signature we also have seen that pki and the 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 use of the pki is to issue storing revoking of the digital certificate we have seen the role of ca and ra in the digital certificate uh, and what is the digital certificate we have seen uh, TLS it is very important because we use the digital certificate for the source authenticity so TLS as we discussed in the last lecture there uh, it is being used in the data in motion or data in transit and there are various versions released uh, initially it was known as SSL but now it is a TLS because uh, SSL is deprecated even TLS 1.1 is deprecated TLS 1.2 and 1.3 are in industry now we have seen the uh, handshake protocols and the uh, record protocol we have seen that asymmetric key algorithms being used in handshake and the purpose of the asymmetric key to establish the symmetric key so we as we have seen that uh, there are advantage of symmetric key above asymmetric key and vice versa so TLS use both of them and use best of them so they use asymmetric key to exchange the symmetric key and once the symmetric key get exchanged rest of the uh, uh, all the communication happens uh, on the encrypted channel encrypted via the symmetric key so this uh, exchange of the messages call as record and handshake call as establishment of symmetric key and this much information we have discussed in the last video and that's good enough to uh, to uh, go for the ccsp exams questions in this video lecture we will discuss the handshake protocol in detail now so we cover this flow in this slide now. So there are three important string, client string, server string and pre-master string. And the client string let's say ABC, server string is XYZ and the pre-master is 123. And the algorithm the client and server decide uh, to generate a symmetric key. So let's say I have selected uh, a key based on these three parameters. First two character from client, first two character from pre-master and last two character from server so any any algorithm they may select client and server how they will select i will show the flow but three important key, keys are there client string server string and a pre-master so what is flow so client initiate a discussion first by sending a hello message so along with hello it send what are the tls version it supports let's say i support tls 1.1 1.2 1.3 .1 so i will list down all this to the server or I support SSL 1.3, TLS 1.1, I will send this detail to the server. Also, I will say share the supported cipher, cipher suit to the server and the client random string. 
so abc i will send hello message i will send tls version supported i will send and i will send the supported cipher suit and the server what server do server first select the the latest version of the supported tls let's say client has sent tls 1.1 1.2 then i will select the tls 1.2 the server will choose the best one if server also supporting the same also the from the cipher suit it will select the cipher suit that is strong and the supported by server so when server send a hello message reply back in step 2 so it send a cipher suit that will be used to generate the symmetric key and the server random string x y z and the digital certificate that we have seen that pki certificate so server public key will go from server to client there is a step 3 if you say there is a client rec uh, certificate request this is an optional step it's not necessary that client certificate is required in the TLS flow though uh, if it is requested client may send a uh, certificate back and uh, in the TLS 1.3 this has been simplified and faster by clapping this request in in the hello step itself but we will see that 3 and 4 is not very important first two important say hello message reply by hello message in the hello message XYZ and ABC is get exchanged so client has a abc xyz server has abc xyz and the algorithm they have selected which algorithm they will use now the come through step 5 this most important so before step 5 client already received the certificate digital certificate so client send this digital certificate to ca uh, like public key uh, infrastructure authority and uh, and from certificate it extracts the public key so it only not only validate the certificate that it is a valid certificate server has only sent the certificate there is no man in middle attack has happened and that and from that uh, certificate it extracts the public key what is user public key so client has a pre master key the pre master is part of client so client uh, client, client what client do client encrypt one random string we known is a pre-master this pre-master key previously xyz or abc has flown without encryption on the plain text so attacker might be having abc attacker might be having xyz attacker would be having the uh, the cipher suit that has been selected if they are observing the network but the pre-master key that has that will be encrypted by public key of the server as we have seen this in the all our videos as of all that in confidentiality comes with the encryption and for encryption we have to select the senders oh sorry receivers public key the server is a receiver so client will use the uh, server public key and the how the, he got the public key we have this certificate so he will encrypt the so we we in the step c client send the key info the key info is a pre-master key pre-master key is being encrypted with the server public key and server only holds the private key server will able to decrypt it, decrypt it and can able to uh, uh, have the pre-master key with the server also so client has abc xyz and pre-master key because it is generated at the client end and server has abc xyz and the pre-master key because it has reached to server by the step 5 now both can generate the session key we are the same cipher suit that we selected here this chosen cipher suit uh, and the input will be client id client secret and pre master it is cipher suit is sort of the algorithm they have selected so they can create a session key so both will have a session key now client would have a session key server has a session key there is a step 6 mentioned there certificate verify that is associated with the step 3 and 4 so when client has shared the certificate in step 4 server can verify the certificate whether the uh, whether the client is a, a genuine client or not but as I mentioned, this is not a necessary step. This is the optional step. And it's not necessary that client should have also have a digital certificate, valid digital certificate. But server must have a valid digital certificate because that's required in the step 5. Now both has a uh, uh, generated the session key that is a private uh, uh, symmetric key. Then server will send a final message, this finish message encrypted with the symmetric key. And the client has a symmetric key, so it can decrypt it and it can verify that yes i have received the finished message from the server so the client server uh, architecture will complete and the and the the uh, connection get established now every every message that will go from server client to server and uh, that will be we are the uh, the this session key now we go back to this last step the tls record step 
so this we have seen that the the uh, uh, the let's say the session key is generated as a b c uh, a b one two uh, y z so uh, with help of this uh, key we will use this uh, session key to sending messages uh, from client to server and server to client this encryption will happen via the session key so that is called as a record uh, so they sometimes they ask what is a record step what is the handshake step so we should be aware what is a record step so that's all we have covered in the tls theory part in next lecture i will i will show the example simple questions and the uh, uh, questions from the ccsp official uh, question guide and my exam question also so i hope you have understand the concept well revise this lectures multiple times because these concepts are very important direct questions come from this topic and three to four questions you can expect from this question now um, if you want to uh, enroll for a uh, dedicated uh, classes you can reach to me on ccsp certified at the gmail.com thank you for watching this video like my video subscribe my video